Hello, hello, it's Sunday. Hello, hello. Hello, hola, bonjour. Hello, hola, bonjour. Hello, my little apprentice chefs, and happy Sunday to everybody. Let me get my windows all organized. Blessed with a perfect life, I'm so happy to see you here. You are obvious by your absence when you're not around. I'm really glad you're doing better. Let me scroll up to the top here. Let me put on live chat. See, getting it all together. Valentine Alia, Amber's favorite scratch art card. That's their new name today. And I think we've all approved in Discord. Let me get settled. You know, I sit cross-legged in my office chair. Sophie, Javi, Emtha. Uh, who else is here? That's the names I'm seeing. Oh, there's a whole bunch of you down here. Chris Owen is back. You lo oh, my hair. You know what? Honestly, I'm having a, I'm having a nightmare of a hair day, and I just thought it's Sunday. If Kick and Geese can have a cozy Monday stream, then we can have a, a slothy Sunday stream. <laughs> so, this is what you're getting. I'm glad you approve. Um, plus, I was cooking, so I had it tied back. And then I was kind of curling it. And I'm telling you, the damage I did with that bleach last time was nightmare. So I got to kind of be kind to my hair for a little while. Hey, Gator, Metanoia, Amen, Catherine, Jessica. Now I got that uh, romper room vibe going on. Hello, everybody. Kat, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Let me put my phone on. Do not bother me. So we're going to do some cooking because it's Sunday. So um, I've got my tea and I've got my chair here. Although Rio, Rio said that um, his union said he doesn't have to work on Sundays. So it's up to him. It's at his discretion. He may or may not join us. Hey V. Dabria. I'm going to stop saying hello. Hello to everybody. Um, so I was talking to Joan. Oh, that's a good cup of tea. Um, if you were in, uh, yesterday's live, you heard this. And if you weren't, then it's new to you. I'm recreating cooking dishes again, and, uh, uh we're doing them in this live setting. But as I cook for my, uh, mother, I'm her caretaker. Uh, I asked her, I said, should we recreate... It's just regular orange pico tea, nothing fancy, milk and sugar. I said to her, should we recreate Nader's meatloaf or um, Amber's granny's recipe, which I haven't seen, but the descriptions sound like some kind of hideous bastard Kentucky version of carbonara. Uh, so I said, do you want carbonara meatloaf or orange chicken? And she, her, her face lit up. Oh, orange chicken. I love it. So we're having orange chicken tonight. Now, the thing is, Amber never... Rio? Don't go on the table. I don't care how pretty you are. Oh, that's a good boy. Um, He's good. He doesn't go on the table. Yeah, I want to do that Granny's recipe. I haven't even watched it, but I will watch it. Are you coming up to say hello? Are you going to come up? Come up, just stop. There you go, there you go. Oh, you've decided to join us. I'm sorry, I'm busy right now. I know you want attention, my love. Can we give a little attention to Rio? He's apparently very, he doesn't, he's, he's neglected. <laughs> he doesn't get enough attention. Yeah, I know you're yappy right now. Well, I'm busy. I'm talking to the people right now. I'll talk to you later. Yes, I'll talk to you later. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, that's our little Rio segment. Look at the look he's given me. I want attention, and I want it now. Um, <laughs> I just love him so much. 
Uh, so we're doing orange chicken. The problem with orange chicken is Amber has never uh, cooked orange chicken. So we can't really do a reaction to her cooking orange chicken. Um, stop and flop. That's what he does. Uh, you love me, don't... He's obsessed with me. I'm obsessed with you. More like it. Um, so I was looking at Amberlynn orange chicken recipes. Karina, welcome to our little family. Happy to have you join. Um, so I was looking up uh, Amberlynn orange chicken and, and you know, she, there's been a few and there's a compilations of every time she ate orange chicken and I, I, I watched it and I was like, okay, but it's boring. So you remember she did that cringy, cringy, I want to marry orange chicken and she thought it was really funny, but it was just a super ass cringe fest. Well, Dainty, one of our favorite uh, parody kind of channels, did this video two years ago and it's their version of uh, Amber Lynn Reed wants to marry orange chicken, but they've framed it in the style of my weird addiction television show. So I thought that was funny. So I thought we could take a little look at that. It's short. And then we'll look at the cooking of the real orange chicken. And first, I'm going to chat with you guys for a couple of minutes and see what you're saying over here. Of course, you're talking about Rio the man. Jamie says, Merck, you've never wrapped a whole zucchini or carrot and ground beef with cardamom. I, I actually have not done that. Oddly, I have not actually done that. Grandma's recipe, I, I will, uh, I will definitely check that out because I haven't even seen it. I've just seen people talking about it and it sounded terrifying. Amber's favorite scratch art card is trying to do something with the discord thing there, but it's not working. Rio is, of course, licking his junk for you. He is too. He turned two in March and um, June 19th, one week from today, is our two year anniversary together. So he just turned two. I got him when he was 10 weeks old. <coughs> the breeder wouldn't let him leave until his mother kind of pushed him away. So it was a natural separation. So these people were really, really good animal people. Rio, that's kind of rude. We're doing a cooking stream. There's no need to be doing that. Rio, you don't need to <laughs> see the face. He's like, excuse me. Oh, something in the hall has distracted him. Somebody's walking in the hallway. You better go check it out, Rio. Go check it out. All right, let's watch this little Amber video. Today is Jamie's 23rd anniversary. Happy anniversary to you, Jamie. Clearly you're doing something right. Hey, clapping for chlamydia, nice to see you. So we're gonna watch this one. Amberlynn Reed wants to marry orange chicken. I just thought it would be a nice little prelude to our actual cooking video. Metanoia says she loves Rio so much. He's quite the man, really, isn't he? So, let me know about if you're buffering. Yesterday, we didn't have any problems. I closed a certain window that might have made all the difference in the world. Because I used to have the YouTube channel window open, but I don't need that. I don't need my own YouTube window open. So, I don't know if that made the difference. But we seem to be... Um, have no buffering problems much yesterday and so far so good today right <laughs> Jamie I just read thank you scratch art and it took me a minute to process that I thought maybe somebody was sending you scratch art. <laughs> and then I remembered of course we have Amber's favorite scratch art card in <laughs> So yes, happy anniversary to Jamie. Happy 23rd. And didn't you just have a birthday like a couple of days ago too? It's like really woot woot celebration time. Woot woot celebration time in Jamie's house. Uh, 
Yesterday was your birthday and today's your anniversary. Okay, you go, girl. You know, you should space that shit out. <laughs> All right. Let me know about volumes. Sometimes I watch this the live stream back and Amber is so quiet. And I don't know that if you don't tell me that. So I need you guys to be on point about the audio immediately. Tell me right away if it's not loud enough or if it's too loud, let me know. God, I don't know. I don't hear what you're hearing. Let's go. <laughs> yes, you did. Hi, I'm Amber Lynn Reed. I am 27 years old and I am 529 pounds. You guys know I love orange chicken. I love the Cheesecake Factory. Like, orange chicken is I think my soulmate. I'm so ready to devour. Let's be real. Let's be real. Look how good that looks. I feel like I could marry orange chicken. I would wake up every day and fall in love. She thought she was really doing something here and she wasn't funny. She's just, she's not funny. Oh, volume is good. Thank you very much, all you guys. I'm going to turn her down in my headphones a bit because she'd be loud in my headphones. This was one of the cringiest videos I've ever seen her do. This was terrible. With it all over again and just kind of experience the love I have for it every day. Here at the Cheesecake Factory again, I've gotten this three days in a row. Orange chicken because it's so good what was that real audio i got i've gotten this three days in a row or was that cut in audio for the comedic effect that's a lot of food and that's a lot of calories if that was real i don't know that audio sounded a little monk a little funky i don't know if they cut that in with her this is so good yeah, we're definitely going somewhere else tomorrow. I think it's wrong that people can't marry food pretty much because I would marry orange chicken every day and I would eat it every day. I know that's scary. We, do you want to play that back and see? I think they added that in, to be honest, because it didn't match her lips, did it? Fall in love with it all over again and just kind of experience the love I have for it every day. Here at the Cheesecake Factory again, I've gotten this three days in a row. See, they could have spliced that in from any other video that she could have said that, right? Bamboozled says no, it was during Pride. She went to Cheesecake Factory three days in a row. Orange chicken. Well, let's just assume that's true because even if it isn't, it sure isn't that far from the truth probably anyway, right? Hello, God. Because it's so good. What? Oh, she's so happy, eh? This is so good. Yeah, we're definitely going somewhere else. Yeah, it's a deep fake. <laughs> I think it's wrong that people can't marry food pretty much because I would... I didn't think it was her. This is a compilation channel that's edited her videos. I thought they could have been being clever. I would have done that. <laughs> Mary, orange chicken every day, and I would eat it every day. I know that's scary to some people, and I want you guys to see the love I have. Patiently waiting. We've been waiting for like over five minutes because my orange chicken wasn't done yet. Patiently <laughs> waiting. We've been waiting for like over five minutes because my orange chicken wasn't done yet. The thing is though, you guys, <laughs> it's not the orange chicken. I've never seen that clip before. That was so funny. We've been waiting. She is such a snarky snarkalot, eh? When she's 
That face, we've been wait. She does not like to wait for things. She does not like to wait for things. Chicken from everywhere. It has to purely just be from the Cheesecake Factory. That was a perfect Jamie. That was a perfect Karen moment that I completely missed in my Karen video. Damn. I have tried other orange chicken before, and I just don't like it. It's it's just not that good. So the orange chicken at the Cheesecake. I'll tell you why. Later. Factory is just. It's amazing. It is the right texture, the right flavor. There's some vegetables with it and has tons of rice. Wow. So I got their orange chicken, Kung Pao chicken, white rice, a spring roll, and a chicken roll. So I am so ready for this. Let's do a little taste test. Mmm. You can definitely tell it's not like authentic, but it's so good still. Orange chicken was developed by Panda Express, but okay. <laughs> don't go to no Panda Express. Don't go to your local Chinese buffet. No, don't do that. The orange chicken at the Cheesecake Factory is the way to go. We are going to the Cheesecake. Are you buffering? Somebody said they're buffering. Are you buffering? I only see two people saying it. We'll do a quick little check here. I know, authentic orange chicken. It says excellent. I don't know what to do. It's not buffering here. Factory. Um, I have not been there in forever. I've gotten this three days in a row. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited. We're going to go to the cheese. That was a different outfit. See that audio clip of I've gotten that three days in a row? I think that was the same audio clip. And she was wearing a different outfit. I'm telling you. That audio was cut into the other one. I'm telling you. Listen, listen. We are going to the Cheesecake Factory. Um, I have not been there in forever. I've gotten this three days in a row. See? That audio was either cut in over that clip or cut in over the other clip because it's the same exact audio in two different outfits. Call me Orco Jr. I could work for Orco. Come on, for real. That's the same audio. Two different outfits. I've gotten this three days in a row. I'm super excited. We're going to go to the Cheesecake Factory. Spiced. That is my favorite restaurant in the whole world. We're going to meet Eric and Ricky at the Cheesecake Factory. So, yeah, we're about to go. It is 4.05 p.m. And it takes about two hours to get there. So, we have arrived to the beautiful Cheesecake Factory. You excited? Oh, yeah. We are here. You excited? Yeah. <laughs> I know. We are starving. <laughs> she says it every time she walks in there. Are you excited? Are you excited about this overpriced, overprocessed chain restaurant? Are you excited? I like to eat it really, really, really fast because I don't want anyone coming up from behind me or the side of me. I'm not that great a detective. I do a lot of audio editing and it sounded didn't sound right. And it's really easy to just lay audio over a visual clip where nobody's mouth is moving. So it's pretty editing, you know, maybe a little advanced for Spielberg Lynn, but for the rest of us, it's kind of basic. <laughs> Trying to take my orange chicken. It happens a lot. Oh. What are you stealing my food for? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just don't like it. I don't like when people reach across the table and try to take it. Sometimes I have strangers coming up for me trying to take it. So I try to eat it as fast as I can because it's mine. The orange chicken is mine. <laughs> Okay, she's trying to be funny and sarcastic, but does this not have, just ring a little too true? Did that not just feel like a little too true? I don't think she's that good an actor. Just listen to these last two sets. This feels really genuine. Not about strangers coming to take it, but. Me trying to take it, so I try to eat it as fast as I can because it's mine. The orange chicken is mine. <laughs> if I'm the one paying for it, it's mine. Oh, that sounds pretty. Don't touch it, honey. You're jealous. You're not eating the orange chicken with me. No. 
Oh, I'm so excited. Are you guys ready? We have orange chicken. I am so just, I'm kind of in amazement with how good it smells. I'm just gonna dive right in. I do use my fingers. Oh God, she's so funny. Mm. Hey Liz. Ew. Mm. You don't want no one stealing it from you. Hmm. Quiet. You know. Oh yeah, she does eat like a lizard. I was thinking people that People judge my orange chicken love, but I can't help myself. I'm in love. <laughs> Hello. What? Let's do a grocery haul situation. Grocery haul. <laughs> Don't shush Situation. Him. Hey guys, how you doing? How you doing, boo boo? What you doing? How you doing? I got a few of these. They're the orange chicken. Orange chicken, Lynn. I promise I'll stop doing that, but y'all got me. It's a habit. Um, so I love the orange chicken from Cheesecake Factory, but also love it lean cuisine form. Really good. What'd you get? Orange chicken. How's that taste? Orangey and chickeny. Look at the size of the portion of the rice. USA, seriously. Oh my God, that's <laughs> so much rice. I mean, okay, now let's look at how much chicken seriously i would eat maybe six or eight chunks of that chicken on a big for a big meal and like a third of the amount of rice holy portion size oh, you guys you don't stand a chance down there look at this stuff wow <laughs> we are taking my friend out um two of my friends uh, to the Cheesecake Factory. They have never been there before. And I'm just like, girl. And it was so funny. It's Charla. You guys have met her before. Charla's like, is it just a dessert place? And I'm like, girl. <laughs> girl. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was funny. Oh, and by the way, at the Cheesecake Factory, I got orange chicken again. That's pretty much like the only thing that I eat. Okay, using your boobs as a shelf is just not cute. Rio, <laughs> Rio's in a very sucky mood right now. <laughs> Rio, hang on. What are you doing now? What now? What are you doing, Mister Man? Okay. What are you doing? He's very happy today, isn't he? You know what? <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> it's because we're not usually on camera. He's used to being quiet. Well, not that he's quiet. It's coincidence that he's quiet when we're usually live. Because this is what he's like. <laughs> he's a yappy boy. There. Yappy boy. Hi, yappy man. Are we bored of watching Amber talk about this chicken? Do you want to watch the cooking video? Or should we finish this? I notice we're all very easily distracted by Rio. Yeah, <laughs> well, yes, because your, oops, your chair has on wheels, my love. He's plugging for his podcast. He wants a lav mic. He needs to be mic'd up. <laughs> You're stealing the show today, you ham. Oh my gosh. Such a ham. Good boy. You're a good man. Hey, Selster, how you doing? You're buffering a lot? We're all sick of watching Amber. So I looked up. We'll try it now. You want it? Don't eat the cord. You already ate a house coat this week. 
just looking for trouble today. <laughs> Sorry, I know. Don't eat that corn, Mr. Man. Um. Now I forget what I was going to say. Oh. So I made the orange chicken and I tasted it and I love it. Although I do have a couple of suggestions to tweak the recipe now that I've tasted it. Um, but I thought, I can't see her being this much in love with it. And from the pictures I've seen, ay, 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 from the pictures I have seen of uh, Cheesecake Factory orange chicken, it looks, I say gloppy, it looks really thick and, and a lot of artificial color in there. It looks like that sweet and sour sauce almost in color, really orange. Um, so I looked up the Cheesecake Factory recipe, you know, faked out recipes online or whatever. <coughs> and my recipe calls for a half a cup of white sugar and theirs calls for a packed full cup of brown sugar. So that would be, here's the other weird thing. My recipe has two cups of orange juice and the Cheesecake Factory recipe has two tablespoons of orange juice and the rest is water and brown sugar. So that would be why. Yeah, I'm sure in the, re uh, someone said, uh, it's, l it's Liss said, uh, it probably has um, corn syrup. I'm sure the restaurant version does. This was the online copycat version. Um, Emtha, thank you for the super chat. This is compensation for Rio's hard work. Rio, don't eat the plant. Rio, oh my God. The one thing he's not supposed to, he just eats everything. Chris Owen, thank you for the super chat. 7 a.m. Monday here in Australia. Gotta go to work. Bye. Have a good day at work, Chris. Have some orange chicken for lunch. <laughs> Xanthan gum. I'm sure it's full of high fructose corn syrup. I'm sure there's all kinds of chemicals and preservatives. And I'm sure in the restaurants, they probably are supplied uh, orange chicken sauce in bulk. So yeah, but even the online copycat version where you make it, you know, as well as you can close to the restaurant, two cup, double the amount of sugar and a packed cup of brown sugar. Now, I will also say, as we're watching my version here, I think they may put a little bit of sugar in the breading as well because it's, uh, the color is very, very, very brown. And my recipe didn't call for any sugar in the batter. So, I shot it a little differently this time. I shot it on my phone, so the audio will be better. And I also shot it just showing the cutting board. So as much as people like to call me a narc sometimes, I, I don't like the narcception, the merception here. So this is better. We don't have to look at my face twice. Jamie says they even put candied orange peel on it. Oy vey. Veronica says it's so weird she got obsessed on orange chicken when she claims she hates oranges. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Fruit Shoot says if Amberlynn likes it, there's either an excess of sugar and or salt. The orange is the furthest she's ever strayed from beige carbs. Yeah, mine isn't that color and mine is not that sweet. But let's watch it and uh, we'll yap about it along the way. Okay, let's make some orange chicken. Um, my tripod is in the sink. I think that's kind of funny. So orange chicken is basically two separate components. It's the chicken component and the sauce component. It's very easy. So the chicken, we're gonna cut up two breasts of chicken. I've got two breasts of chicken here and we're gonna cut them up into chunks. We're then going to dip them in egg and toss them in a mixture of flour and cornstarch. When that's done, we're going to fry the chicken and then we'll make the sauce. So let's start with the chicken. Chris Owen says he's a pilot. I think I'll pass watching at work. Yeah, Chris, please don't watch at work. And fly safe. I'm very jealous because I really miss flying. 
I spend a lot of time in those little 12-seaters flying around Costa Rica, and I miss that. Er, jealous. Okay, I sped this up, too. I'm not going to try and snow you that I was... I probably could chop it that fast, but I sped this up. I try to speed up the boring parts. <laughs> the horse in the background. <laughs> you guys are watching. You guys look at everything, don't you? This board, we're going to bleach it and disinfect it. And we're just going to go to a whole new cutting board. Let's get it's rid of it. It's just easier that way. So, we're going to put the chicken aside and we're going to start on the sauce. In here, I have... Elizabeth says she doesn't like oranges, but she likes clementines. I was actually going to maybe use clementines, but I went and bought these oranges because... Um, better zest on a navel orange it's bigger and the flesh is firmer it's just easier to zest and you get a bigger yield out of it but you could certainly use clementine you could use any citrus you could use grapefruit you could use I wouldn't recommend grapefruit but <clears throat> excuse me you could use lemon I know uh, Valentine doesn't like orange you could certainly use lemon you, blood oranges would be really nice if you want to get fancy Blood orange would make a beautiful colored Sorry, sauce. I did it a little in advance. In here I have garlic, ginger powder, and sugar. And to that we're going to add a cup of orange juice, some soy sauce, and you should have rice vinegar and I don't, so I'm using apple cider vinegar. It's okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. So let's make some sauce. I will tell you after finishing it, I would reduce the amount of vinegar. A rice vinegar is very mild, but so is apple cider vinegar. Um, I would It calls for two tablespoons. I would reduce the vinegar by maybe half. I find it a little sharp. Let's finish zesting this orange. This is a zester. You can use a cheese uh, box shredder, but this gives you nice long... I love a nice zester. ...strands of zest. Let's juice some oranges. Yeah, white wine vinegar, any. Sorry, this doesn't cause the same. I would say you can substitute any vinegar except maybe um, balsamic because it's got a very distinctive flavor. Uh, white wine vinegar, sure, why not? What you're looking for is a more mild vinegar, really. I would even think that you could probably sub out the vinegar for lemon juice, but you know, what you're looking for is some, some acidity, basically. I'm just using a fork. Okay, let's continue. So we're gonna use this little pot here to make our sauce, which starts with a cup of orange juice. This is a half cup, so of course two of them. Half a cup and another half a cup. I will put all the ingredients in the description. I'll write that up later. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. Oh, brand new soy sauce. Starts with a bang, says they've always used a microplane. I love a nice microplane. Honestly, I don't know if it's a pastry chef thing. I just, I have something about using a really good zester and then chopping the zest up afterwards. But however you get there, it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever works for you. That's, you know, I used to say to my apprentices, I don't care how you get to the end result, as long as the end result is the same and at work within the same, you know, approximate length of time. I don't care what knife you use, what plane you use, just get to the same place. Whatever works for you, right? One. Two. Hi, good Tama. Hi, goody Tama. And two 
two tablespoons of rice vinegar or white vinegar. No, use one. And, you know, I'm using apple cider vinegar. Use so one. Two. And that's for the, <laughs> the funky jams is I put the YouTube uh, studio on and they've got royalty free music that we can use. And I just picked jazz and I just let it play because I just wanted some noise in the background <laughs> and I didn't want to get copyright claimed for anything that I really like. So it changes like every two minutes or so. <laughs> Let's get those out of the way. <laughs> 70s porn music. <laughs> so we've got orange juice, soy sauce, vinegar. Now we're going to add in, this is our sugar. Yeah, but unlike Amber, I do not like to walk around my house naked. <laughs> Garlic and ginger powder. Use fresh ginger if you have it. I didn't have any today. So... Yeah, this is porn for Amber. <laughs> Sophie's right. Those in there. <laughs> we're gonna bring that to a simmer, and we're gonna thicken it with a little corn bomb chicka bow uh, wow corn starch. Wow chicka bow wow. We have some of our remaining orange juice, which we'll put in here. I don't know about a tablespoon or so. And let's start with a, a half a tablespoon of cornstarch because we don't want to make it super gloppy <laughs> and thick. Let me start it on the daddy thing again. So, cornstarch and orange juice. We're waiting for this to come to a simmer, which happens a lot faster when you turn the stove on. <laughs> Pro tip. I am a stoner. <laughs> Thinks it happens. <laughs> now, while we're waiting for that to come to a boil, we can start the process. <laughs> That's what Amber heard in her head every time she had this meal. Um, chicken I'm getting our wow. chicken ready. I'm going to use three eggs. I didn't need three eggs. I could have used two. So that's three eggs. Pro tip. Pro tip. Of course, mix them up well. Turn the stove on. Always add a little bit of seasoning when you're breading things. Uh, I have to go very light on the pepper. The person I'm cooking for cannot handle any spice, including black pepper. Black pepper is too spicy for her. Cooking for Seniors 101. So I snuck a little black pepper in there. Let's not tell her. Shh. Back to our raw chicken, which we're also going to season. Season everything along the way. I should have put... I'm going to use my hands, which I'm going to wash and disinfect afterwards. You can use gloves if you want. I do not. At this point, you should also add pepper, which I'm not going to do. Just give it a quick toss and make sure. Hello, Dana. Welcome from Germany. I, I was going to say guten tag, but that's good day, right? Oh, she's here for a live for once. Yeah, this is an unusual time we're doing on Sundays now. It's nice. We get some different, coded. different time zone people coming. I hear our sauce is coming to a boil. So, do you hear the sauce? Let's turn that down a little bit. Finish with our chicken. So this is a simplified breading of sorts. It's not a true breading, but you're gonna use an egg wash and you're gonna use a flour mixture. Now in the beginning I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned, this is half flour and half cornstarch and of course salt. Um, cornstarch makes things a lot crispier a tempura batter is made with cornstarch. That's why it's really light and crispy. I would recommend using more salt in that flour. And you could also put some garlic powder if you're into that sort of thing. Um, I would, having eaten it now, I would have seasoned that a lot more than I did. For me, it's going to work well because, you know, seniors 101. Uh, somebody said something black pepper on strawberries is good, but you know what else is really good on strawberries is balsamic vinegar. So what you're going to do, and we're going to do this in sections because we have a lot of pieces here. You're going to dip your, dip your uh, chicken in your egg 
and get it all coated nicely. There's no... You can do glue... <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me. <coughs> I'm very... F Never mind. Um, you can do gluten-free tempura, but you know what? You could also use tofu instead of chicken. And you can use tamari instead of soy sauce if you have a gluten allergy. The way around this is a messy job. So you're going to strain out. Breading is messy. There's no way around it. And we're going to drop those pieces right in that flour and cornstarch mixture. Make sure you got a rag or a paper towel handy. A little bit of balsamic just I makes... Gently toss them. Just makes the strawberries... I'm going to put my hand in there right away because if your hand is damp, it's going to get coated. Tastes more strawberry-ish. Gently toss them. And then what? And then what? And after your hand is dry, you can fish them out. Make sure they're well coated. And we're going to transfer them over to this plate. Well, I guess I should move my... It's okay head. if you take a little of the extra out. It's okay. And that's our chicken. Ready to go. Oh, for goodness sake, I had everything turned off. Okay. Our sauce is boiling. I did a whole beautiful... Ed I Listen, I chopped the shit out of that zest and it was beautiful. It was like food porn. It was knife skills. It looked great. And then I forgot to film it. So I took some of this orange zest and I chopped it fine and I added it into the sauce. And the, the sauce has come to a boil. Uh, I stirred in the orange juice and corn... Before the sauce came to a boil, I stirred in the orange juice and cornstarch. So that's what I forgot to film. I chopped up some zest and added it to the sauce. We poured the cornstarch and the orange juice in here and we brought it up to a boil. So it's thickening a bit. See, different color than the one on her. Sweet honey would be good in there. So our sauce is ready to go more or less. I'm going to move it over to this other burner. I know, I hate my electric stove, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. I make it work. And in this pan, I've got about an inch or two of oil. I used, We're going to let that get hot. I used just regular shortening, actually. Okay, I think our oil is hot. Now, Instacar doesn't gotten here yet. Music comes back now. Paper towels. So I have to sacrifice a kitchen rag. After we pull the chicken out of the fat, the we're going to just put it in here so it can absorb some of the Food porn music again, right? Fat. All right. Let's go. We're going to have to do this in small batches because my pot isn't that big. Yeah, tofu Be very work. careful. Of course, oil is hot. Let's put them in here first. And then we can use this to drop them into the hot oil. I literally used Crisco shortening because that's what I had hanging around. You could use a more health conscious oil. Uh, you just want to be careful of the smoke points of oils, like uh, extra virgin olive oil. You can't fry with that. It, it, you want this oil to be able to hit a temperature of about 380 degrees Fahrenheit in order to cook the chicken and brown the batter properly. So uh, you could probably do it in a veg oil, but yes, I uh, was a chef for 30 years, Susan. Uh, red seal pastry chef, but I've also worked as a chef. I can't use water. Yeah, just boil it. Let's <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> no. No, Amber, you can't substitute the oil for water. I don't know if it's difficult to launder my kitchen towels after using it for grease because I generally don't do that. I just didn't have paper towels today. <laughs> So yeah, I just use good old-fashioned Crisco shortening. It's actually really good to fry in. If you want to do it really good, use duck fat. <laughs> That'll be amazing. I don't want to move this, but it's frying. You've seen frying before. You know what frying looks like. Okay, I think our first batch is ready. I'll be honest with you. I think they're a little pale. So I just turned up the temperature on the oil. <laughs> Can you imagine putting so this in them up. boiling water instead of oil? <laughs> Let the oil drip. And very carefully, don't drip that oil. 
onto your burner. Don't start any fires. Transfer them onto your pan. Yeah, duck fat would be good, right? Out. And let's go again. I don't think I can put them all in. Let's go again. That was weird. I'll see you on the other side. You don't need to watch frying things. Right. Truth? Hey, who, look, who's that? This is my dinner tonight and it's too early for dinner. I'm not, so I'm not gonna put the whole thing together, but let me show you a little piece of what it'll look like when you're all done. <laughs> okay, now we got kind of a wonky angle. <laughs> Bear with me. Don't they look yummy? I'm so happy with them. <laughs> Well, like I said, this is my dinner tonight, so I don't want to get this all soggy up, right? <laughs> all soggy up. <laughs> so I'll just show you one, and then we can see. Sounds so here's one beautiful nugget. Sounds Jamaican. All what soggy up. What you're going to do is uh, you're basically going to coat the nuggets in your hot sauce. You can either pour. You, can either, you could pour this sauce all over this chicken and put it in the oven for 10 minutes. Or you could boil this sauce and make sure it's hot. This is hot. Oops. <laughs> Just bounce. Throw, throw and, it around. Uh, toss your chicken in your sauce. Of course, over some rice or noodles. Garnish with a little zest. And there we have orange chicken. Orange chicken. First time I made it. Mmm. I see why she likes it. It's really good. <laughs> Try it. It's easy. Okay, you go. let's make some orange chicken. We just made orange chicken. So there you go. Amberlyn reads orange chicken. Now, if you want it to be more like her orange chicken, use less fresh orange juice and twice the sugar. But in the next... Sometime this, this evening, I might have to run down and eat right away, but... At some point this evening, I'll put the full recipe in the description. I should do that first. But uh, somebody asked if I'm ever high while I'm cooking. Yes, generally speaking. Um, it's really good, and I'm dying to try it. Uh, my mom can't swallow rice anymore. She has a problem with rice, so I was going to use rice vermicelli noodles, but they were there was none in the store today. So I'm going to make rice for me and just make her some potatoes. Metanoia says she's making this to, they are making this tonight. I did. Why not? It's really good. I'm telling you what, that was easy, right? Like seriously, not hard. It's not even hard breading. You could saute up, yep, yeah, Veronica, some, saute up some uh, peppers and onions and toss them in there as well. With the orange zest. You could put some ginger on there, like some fresh ginger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, use tofu instead of chicken. Use tamari instead of soya for gluten-free stuff. I think it's a pretty uh, flexible recipe. And that sauce, there's nothing to that sauce. Orange juice and soya sauce is the base. The rest of it, the ginger, the garlic, and the sugar, you can adjust that to taste. You don't have to follow the recipe exactly. But when you first time you make something, it's good to follow the recipe because it gives you a baseline of where to start. Like I said, if I made that again, I would actually substitute the white sugar with brown, but I would keep it at the same amount because brown sugar has a bit more flavor, right? And I would reduce the vinegar by half because it's a little tangy. Now, you should also put red chili flakes in there, but you know, we don't do hot stuff here in, in this house. So yeah, definitely red chili flakes to, to balance the sweetness makes it really nice. So there you go. And you know what? I totally forgot that I even had this happening today. I could marry orange chicken. Right? I love the Cheesecake Factory. So there we have orange chicken. Marinate the tofu. You know what else? One time I made, uh, yay. One time I made uh, ceviche, but instead of shrimp and whitefish, I used tofu. 
So what I did is I marinated the tofu in lime and oil for quite a long time. And then I, I grilled the tofu so it had nice grill marks on it. And then I used, made it, then I used it as if it, it was any other, then I made ceviche with that tofu. Really good. 10 out of 10 recommend. I hate that expression. <laughs> you know I hate that expression. Sophie says, use staples instead of oranges. No, you people, I, you shouldn't hang around with kicking geese if she's telling you to use staples. Sophie needs to go to culinary school with us because she wants to cook the chicken in water and then add staples. So yeah, Sophie, no. Don't. Orange chicken is the new gay. Rate my dish. I don't know. It's, the way it is now, I'd give it about a 7.5. I find that when I make things, it takes three times to perfect it for my own taste buds. Like, the third time's a charm, really. I hear a bus out there. That's odd. Anyway. Valentina had a gross joke with orange chicken, and he's going to keep it to himself. We'll go post it in NSFW. <laughs> on, the, uh, on the Discord. <laughs> Also, you can make ceviche out of green papaya. Yeah, someone else mentioned platino as well. I just thought the tofu ceviche was an interesting idea. I don't, I don't recall really seeing it before. Listen, can you hear those protesters out there screaming and yelling? Probably not. I can. We were out yesterday. <clears throat> no, it's not. It's not a... We were out yesterday and the protesters started marching down Young Street as they've done every Saturday for the last two years. And I looked at Uncle Tim and I said, what the hell are they protesting? As of yesterday, they lifted all of our mask mandates in the city of Toronto. It's your choice, but it's no longer a mandate. So we stood on the corner, we waited for them, and you know what they're protesting? Masks. It's like, guys, it's... The first sign we saw said, legalize humanity. I was like, geez, I didn't know it was illegal. There's a lot of us that are going to be in a lot of trouble. Because there's a lot of, there's like a billion, more than a billion humans. And apparently we're all illegal. I didn't know. And then they, you know, get rid of the mask mandate. And I thought, well, we did. And you're doing this every Saturday for the last two years has made no difference to anything. So why don't you just go have brunch? Stop yelling so much. <laughs> you know, I get the passion of being in a march. I've done them in the past. But now that I'm old, I kind of go, yeah, you know what? Never seen one make a difference. But, yeah, legalize humanity. Legalize humanity. Legalize humanity. What? What? Really? <laughs> Taylor says... Maybe take an edible and chill the fuck out. I mean, we're in Toronto. There's 250 damn dispensaries. Every six, 16 feet, there's another dispensary. Chill out. <laughs> Hobby says, legalize orange chicken. I, I didn't do a calorie breakdown, but I don't think mine is quite the calories hers was. Veronica is not a ceviche fan, and you live kind of in the land of ceviche, don't you? Was there Vietnam protests in Canada? You mean during the Vietnam War or recently? Probably during the... I don't know. I'm not old. I'm not that old. <laughs> Vietnam War? Wasn't that in the 50s? I was born in 63. <laughs> Probably, I don't know, what everybody was running here, weren't they all the draft dodgers coming to Canada? Or that was during, did you say Korea? Oh, Vietnam. No, Korea was in the 50s, right? Vietnam was in the 60s and 70s. Oh, it was not in Nam. <laughs> Never in Nam. <laughs> a friggin' tree hugger, anyway, at the best of times. 
ceviche is so so good and now I kind of want to make ceviche because I haven't made it in a really long time because I cook for Joan all the time and Joan doesn't like anything spicy and she doesn't eat any uh, seafood she doesn't like shrimp uh, maybe I'll do it next Saturday for brunch no we, we go out for brunch okay maybe I'll just do it for myself Liz's dad is a Vietnam vet well I'm sure everybody is very thankful for his service. I'm not putting down vets by any means. They're a hell, hell of braver than I was. My dad fought in the war, World War II, because my dad, who is long dead, would now be how old? My mother's 88. My dad would be 98 years old if he was alive. For ceviche, I generally just use shrimp. I'm a shrimp fan, so it's ceviche de camarón for me usually. Um... I think sometimes I put that fake crab in it. Or what is it? To... What's that stuff? You know, the fake crab. I can't think of what it's called. Give give her a TV dinner and make ceviche. There's one night... There's one night when I tell her... Oh, Saturday nights. I don't cook for her Saturday nights. I tell her she's on her own because I do brunch. And then I do my live stream, which is kind of over dinner time. And she doesn't want to eat that late, and she doesn't want to eat that early, and I don't want to eat earlier because I'm out with Tim, so Saturday she's on her own. So maybe I'll do ceviche for next Saturday, and I'll film it and I'll for next Saturday. Even if we do a Nader thing or whatever else we do that's fun and related to the verse, we'll slip in a, a ceviche next Saturday, because it's dead easy. It doesn't take very long. It can be too tart, but you got to balance it out the right way. You know, in Ecuador and Costa Rica, they use um, a little bit of 7-Up uh, or Sprite in their ceviche. Pro tip. <laughs> like turning on the stove. Imitation crab. Yeah, but what is it? Pollock. That's what it's made out of. Pollock. That's the, what I was looking for. Nader's existence is triggering. He's on now. I wonder what he's destroying in the kitchen. I don't want to watch him too much, but can we just have a little peeky? Do you want? Should we have a little peek and see what Nader's doing? A stream style <laughs> hobby. You're reading my mind. Oh, is that stream style? See, I'm you know because I'm old. I don't know all the all the hip lingo of all the kids. <laughs> all the hip lingo of you kids. Are we stream sniping? Is that when you live stream someone else's live stream? <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> we can just pop in and have a little peeky poo. <laughs> See what he's cooking. See if he's cooking. I don't even know what the hell this thing is. What is this thing? <laughs> what is this thing? Is? What's his channel name? Nader Elshami or something? feel like we're doing oh foodie booty streaming too <laughs> they're both live streaming at the same time these two are nuts <laughs> they're both... oh my god oh my god that's so funny we're not chatting or anything i don't want him to know we're here Oh, I can't hear him. Oh, he's not cooking, though. He really thinks he's... He thinks he's something else, eh? <laughs> I love... God, I wish I had his confidence. He really thinks he's a sexy man, doesn't he? Is boring. He's boring unless he's cooking. All he does is read the chat and he doesn't even talk to anybody. Even when he's cooking, he doesn't talk. He thinks he's the poop. It's fun to troll him because he gets so triggered. Teresa, honey, he says hi, chat, not indeed. I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going in there. Are you kidding me? Say hi to Teresa, Dan. Uh, 
Nah, he's boring. Let's see what <laughs> let's see what Chantel's saying. Maria, Maria. Seems pretty quiet in the in their world. Oh, she's gonna. No, she's gonna get us demonetized for her damn music. That's about as much time as I want to spend with those two. <laughs> I just wanted to see if he was cooking something. I know, I heard he did a 12-hour live stream. Who does he think he is? Eugenia Cooney? Did he eat or pee at all? Because she doesn't. I was thinking of that yesterday, you know, because I had to go to the washroom <laughs> the last, like, 30 minutes of my live stream. And I know I can just get up and go to the washroom. I know everybody does that. Um, not just Justine. My goodness, you know, I like, uh, I watch H3, even he does that. He gets up and goes, takes a number two <laughs> while he's live streaming. Now, admittedly, he's got a whole crew there that talk and entertain, but people do that, right? If you're going to be on camera for more than an hour and a half or so, you may have to go to the bathroom. But Eugenia Cooney, she didn't ever, 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 ever get up and go to the bathroom. Or drink anything. Yesterday I had my tea. I had a coffee, and I had an iced coffee, all sitting here during my live stream. I don't know how those people do it. Have I shared my past with narcs before, Blackjack asks. Yes, here and there I do. I'm a caretaker for my, <clears throat> excuse me, for my aging mother, who is uh, the narcissist in my life, who's colored who I am today. Um... I'm an only child from a single parent. My dad died when I was nine, so I was raised by my mother. And it was just her and I, and she is exactly the same kind of narcissist as Amberlynn. Which is why I started looking at Amberlynn from in that, uh, through that filter, because I'd be watching her and be going, oh, okay, I've seen this a million times. I know what she's doing. I've seen it a million times. So, yeah, that's... You know, I haven't made a whole, whole video based on it because I don't think I'm that interesting, but it's come up now and again. I'm not going to make a whole video about myself. I'm not Amber. How can you make a whole channel for 10 years and just talk about yourself? That's insane. And then this, before I started, I thought, you know, because I just have my hair all tied up funny, I thought I was going to come on and say, hey guys, it's four o'clock and I just got up and I'm really sorry, but I fell asleep in my makeup and all my clothing, and I thought, oh my god, <laughs> that's a lot, like, girl, go have a shower and wash your face, <laughs> I can't imagine, just, what does she just literally roll out of bed and pick up her phone and start vlogging, wipe the sleep out of your eyes, crazy, oh, our Amber, our Amber, Blackjack says narcs are the absolute worst. I'm glad you're at least in a happy place in life. I'm still struggling. Blackjack, this is how I frame it with my mother. Because she's my mother, right? I say I don't... Um, I love her to death. I just don't like her very much sometimes. And I don't take her narcissism personally. I try and look at it like any other disease. And uh, her intent isn't to be... Her intent isn't to have the effect on me that it is, that she does, because in the moment it's all about her. And they're broken people, just like anybody else is a broken person with some kind of disorder. You know, do you blame a schizophrenic for having schizophrenia? No, but we blame narcissists because it's a little bit more subtle and insipid, but honestly that's how I try and look at it. She's a broken person. And she just doesn't know how to love me the way that I should be loved. And that's okay. I've come to terms with that. Like today I was going out and I said, I called her and I said, I'm on my way out to the store. Do you need me to pick up anything for you? And she said, yeah, she needs coffee. So I go down and she was going to give me her bank card. So I go down to grab her bank card. And she starts snipping at me about this and snapping at me about this and this and that and this and that. And I finally walk up walking away down the hall going, oh, you goddamn bitch, I'm just coming to do you a favor, you gotta attack me at the door, blah, blah, blah. And then I thought, you know what? The thing she was bitching about, she's having an issue she's trying to solve, and she's very frustrated with it, because 
um, she's 88 and she's having a hard time with online ordering and stuff. Things are getting confusing for her. So I've noticed that when she gets incredibly frustrated, she takes it out on me. I'm the target and she gets real snippy with me. So I've decided that I'm not going to, I'm going to really try hard to make a concerted effort to not react when she's in that mood because I know it's not really directed at me. It's her own frustrations at her life situation coupled with her narcissism. So that's a lot of words to say, you know, I just, I love her. I just don't like her very much and I, I gotta make do. You know, she's not horrible all the time. We have a giggle once in a while. But that's my two cents take on the whole parental narcissism. Black Jacks is their partner. That's hard. And, you know, it's funny because I think back now and I think probably almost every relationship I was in was almost all of them were narcissists. I didn't see it at the time. I didn't see it in my mom at the time. But now that I see that kind of behavior, it's interesting. Dr. Romani. Yeah, I, I don't mind her. There's a new one I found. I posted a link in our Discord. Uh, I don't know if anybody watched it, but I'm telling you, please go watch it. It's so good. It's about the daughter, uh, being the daughter of a narcissistic mother. And it was like, there's 16 points they talk about. And I'm going, yeah, okay. Yep, 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 yep. All 16. We got all 16 of them. But it's really good. And, you know, the more you learn about that stuff, the more you know, oh, okay, wait a second. It's not me. I'm not crazy. They're not mean. They're broken. You know? Their entitlement isn't to hurt you. It's just because they don't even think about you. <laughs> anyway. That's my trying to be very patient and understanding, I guess. It's just life is a lot easier if you just give somebody... You know, when you give people a break, it's just a lot easier. To a point. There's a point where you don't give them breaks anymore and you cut them out of your life. If she wasn't my mother, I would have cut her out of my life a long time ago. But she is my mother and she's old and she can't live alone really very well. So, there you go. Barumbi. That's my story. Right, Daddy? This is my daddy bird. Daddy. Hey, Sophie. <laughs> I won't. I won't say it. Sophie gets all triggered when you say, Daddy, feed me some lamb, Daddy. I've got my big girl overalls on. Anyway, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Sundays is just we try and keep it cooking in and out. We did a little bit of narc talk at the end there. Liz says, I don't think my mom is a narc, but is the adult child of an alcoholic father. That probably causes real similar sort of stuff, I would guess. <laughs> Sophie was buying a rug. Daddy, do you like the rug? <laughs> you guys have a great Sunday night. Have a super duper supper. Go make some orange chicken and post it up in the Discord. Join the damn Discord if you haven't already. We're fun in there. Rio says goodbye. I know he would if he was here, but you know, union rules. He already broke them. Have a really, really good night. Make some chicken. Have a great dinner. I'm taking tomorrow off, but I'll probably see you Tuesday or Wednesday. Until we meet again, you know the routine. Be kind. <laughs>